Hi, this is my first video for YouTube. Um, I won't actually be, be making the wine today. Instead, I'll be trying to clear it, trying to find it, get as much sediment out as possible, um, ready for bottling. In this video, I'll show you how to rack wine, how to make a siphon without having to put your lips around the end of it, which is very unsanitary. Um, so in the first part, basically, I've got four demijohns worth of wine, that, which I've tried to clear with clear it, part A and part B. Um, you should normally see results within 24 to 48, 48 hours. Now this wine is a month old, um, and as you can see, it, it, it still looks like dishwater. It's murky, it's cloudy, it, it's not very appealing. Uh, and that can only be down to the fact that I used apple juice uh, as a base, along with other things such as uh, white grape juice, cranberry, raspberry, etc. All from concentrate. Uh, but the apple tends to be a really cloudy fruit anyway. I've never used it before, hence the video, trying to clear it. So basically, that's the wine. It's got the basic chemicals, uh, additives, etc. Citric acid, pectolase, yeast nutrient and yeast. Uh, and here you see me trying to mix up, trying? Here you see me mixing up some bentonite clay. It is two teaspoons to 200 ml of boiling water uh, and that's so that I can get a roughly half a teaspoon into each demijohn which is probably overdosing it a little bit but uh, I've read it online uh, that's supposed to work I've never thought of putting it in after normally I put it in before as it tends to help the wine clear throughout the fermentation process uh, so here goes average of about 50 mil I'm aiming for here not really much more I can say about this <laughs> it is what it is Obviously, I'll have to give them all a swirl over the next 24 hours. But while recording, I only had one hand. So yeah, gently swirl over the next 24 hours uh, to keep the sediment, you know, suspended within the liquid, as well as the bentonite clay. Uh, I'm not sure the actual science on it. I know that it's something to do with static electricity. Um, that the particles are drawn to the bentonite or vice versa and eventually the whole thing falls to the bottom uh, and that's your sediment that's what you leave behind when you rack off your wine so that's that part I'll come back to them in 24 hours Here's a little tip, if you are, I don't know, hard up on cash or a tight ass like me, you can get baby bottle sterilizers from Asda for 74p, really cheap, they're for sterilizing, uh, they actually say on the side, I'm trying to show you there, but it's, it's not focused correctly, basically you can use them for sterilized anything from baby bottles to demijohns, siphoning tubes, etc, airlocks, bungs, the lot, uh, even to the point where if you're using tap water to top up wines and you're worried about chlorine, put in one tablet, leave it for an hour and come back and you've got sterilized water. Uh, that's it, they're simple, they're cheap, uh, that's it, I'm just adding boiling water to this one. Just to uh, give it a little bit extra, not that it needs it, but who wants to use cold water when you can use hot, you know, the steam should help as well, get all around the edges of the bin, it's a very curious Labrador in the kitchen. But that's it, pop the kettle back, leave it for 30 minutes. That's it, so yeah, just leave it for 30 minutes or so. I think I left this for about an hour, but that's it. Okay, so here's another little tip. Um, if you've not got a auto siphon, 
or a bottling wand. All I'm doing is I'm attaching the siphoning hose to a racking cane, and then the racking cane, uh, sorry, not the racking cane, <laughs> I've got the right muddle then trying to keep up. Okay, the siphoning hose gets attached to a racking cane, um, and on the other end you have a tap. Now the tap, obviously on and off, but um, I'm just going to continue anyway, obviously lower that in slowly. So basically, between the tap and the siphoning hose, I'll attach another piece of siphoning hose. So the tap will be on the outside of the demijohn, which I'll try and show you here. So basically, the siphon hose is full, full up with water, uh, cool boiled water. Uh, and you plug it all together, trying to keep the water within the hose. Obviously, this is just to avoid you sucking on the end and contaminating it. So you'll lower that end in, and the tap is on the outside. So obviously, turn the tap on, let gravity do the work, make sure that uh, whatever you're filling up is lower down, lower than whatever's, you know, your bucket. Keep it lower, gravity will do the job. So that's that, the hose is prepped, the wine is ready, switch the hose on, push to the bottom of the bucket to keep the oxygen out, and let it go. Obviously I'm not going to show you the whole thing, this is just a demonstration. Crossed. Don't lose any wine. And then once they're done, you can uh, empty out the sediment that's left in the bottom. Fill them all with boiling water. Let the boiling water cool down before adding in the sterilizing tablets. See that they just they fizz up. They're really good, and you don't need to fill them all the way up because the gas that's created will get the get to the bits that you can't reach anyway. Got the airlock sitting in the sterilizing solution, and then just slowly start filling them back up. See the taps on the outside, switch the tap off. Remove, no spillage, no leakage. And pop straight into another damage on. Switch the tap on from the outside. Away you go. It reduces the risk of oxidization, you see. And that's basically it. I'll um leave it until clear and come back and show you but it, it's had the additives added to it the clearing the fining agents etc well that was like magic um so now now it's just a waiting game to be honest i've never had to wait this long for wine to clear in the past Ta -da! previous batches of wine but there's your part a and part b And there is one kg of bentonite clay, which was used. Cheers for watching. See you later.